I am Liz hirschnoff tolly and I want to welcome you to our podcast, Capital Coffee Connection. And the point of our podcast is to speak with amazing elected leaders and not to talk with them about politics or policy, but to really talk to them about humanity, heart, the home, and to get to know who they are. Because one of the things I've learned, and I'm not a politician and I'm not a journalist, but I've had the opportunity to get to know many politicians through the work I do to support them. And one of the things that I've learned is there are phenomenal people out there. And when I talk to others, they'll say things like, ah, she's just a politician. Oh, he's just a politician. And what I've learned is that these just politicians actually are really interesting people and in so many ways are like us. And, um, you know, I think about like the human genome, which basically says that 99.6% of all people People are 99.6% the same, that there's only 0.4% that is actually different between us, between any two people, over 8 billion people. So I think to myself, okay, so we have so much in common. What is that 0.4% that's different? And how do we bring us together on that versus separate us? And how do we like find commonality and actually celebrate our differences? And so my hope is that through this podcast and through this opportunity to speak to uh, really incredible elected leaders is to sort of try to find those answers out. So I I was thinking about uh, our guest today, and I thought back to when I was a little girl. And I remember all through my childhood that my mother would literally drop us off at this house. And inside this house was a paradise of art. And this woman, her name was Dorothy Cannon. We called her Dot. And she was already old when I first met her, but she just kept staying older. But in each room in her house was like a different area. There was one room you would do ceramics, one room where you would paint, one room where you would do silk screen. I mean, each room had its own theme and really like kids all afternoon would do art. The older kids would help them. She would walk around, but basically you were sort of free just to create. And I still have a couple of those pieces. And what I realized all these years later is that I wasn't a very good artist. But I really loved art. And I loved being creative. And I loved just the environment. And I bring this up because um, our guest today, who is a congresswoman, who I'm going to introduce, has been passionate about art herself and how to put art and weave it between um, the social work and political work that she does. So uh, it is a great pleasure to introduce Congresswoman Sydney Kamliger Dove and uh, tell you just a little bit about her. She is the California representative from District 37. Woo! And that includes, for people that are familiar with LA, Culver City, Inglewood, Mid City, Century City, Beverly Wood, Pico Robertson, Exposition Park, University Park, West Adams, Crenshaw, and Baldwin Hills. So it kind of was like a little rap because I know she likes rap and hip hop. <laughs> um, and for people that don't know LA, that kind of includes USC, Culver City Art District, LA Fashion District. And it's a really cool and, and diverse uh, uh, environment. And as I mentioned, the Congresswoman has been very passionate about art. And we'll get into that a little bit. But first, I just want to welcome you. And she brought her own tea. So I'm having coffee. She's having tea. Uh, Welcome. And thank thank you you for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. So we're going to start and we're going to go back to the beginning of Sydney time. Mm. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit about you grew up in Chicago. and tell us a little bit about growing up, what it was like, what your parents were like, and what it was like to grow up in Chicago and some experiences you had. I, our goal is for people just to get to know you. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I was raised in Chicago and in Brooklyn uh, because at a very young age, my mom moved to Brooklyn after my folks separated and then I moved with her shortly after. But Born in Chicago, uh, on the kitchen table, uh, on the near literally, north side, like liter- literally on wow. the kitchen table. Um, so my mom and my dad uh, met each other in school, and then uh, it's an interracial marriage. And so they had challenges getting housing uh, because folks didn't want to rent to them because right. they were a mixed-race family. Um, they, yes, you know, decided to have me, and my mom didn't want to have me in a hospital. And so there was a program, she said, that would allow uh, expectant mothers to give birth at home, and a midwife would come and a doctor. 
And so I was born on the kitchen table. My grandmother's a nurse. My aunt's a nurse. They were both there. Uh, my dad's friends were there. And so one of them held the mirror so she could <laughs> see me come out. And then my uncle and a friend were stirrups for her. Um, and I popped out and she made sure to have me while my great great grandmother was staying with her and wow. she had come to make sure that my mother had a clean apartment prepared for the birth of her first baby and so she said even when she was pregnant she had her like scrubbing the floors because she Amazing. said i can't have my baby come out here in a dirty apartment and so um it was a real sort of family thing. So I'm sorry, that was a great, 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 great. three greats. Yes, Pretty three cool. greats. My wow. great, great, great grandmother. We, I called her Graham. And she was around up until I was three. I actually have a photo of her. Amazing. And so, so born on the near north side with a bunch of hippies um, and went to elementary school there. And I was a brownie and a Girl Scout. And um, I went to St. Vincent de Paul <laughs> for Ella for kindergarten and I remember a crazy time when they sent us home because somebody had lice and we went home with our heads all wrapped up in towels and my mother was like, what is going on? But it was a great city, um, full of excitement and, and food and great music. Right. Um, there was the um, all the music festivals during the summer and Taste of Chicago. And then my folks separated. Um, and so I spent time with my dad at his apartment and then my mom at her apartment. And then she moved to Brooklyn because she's an actress. And then I followed her shortly thereafter. And I went to PS11, which was an elementary school in New York, and then Summit Junior High. And just, you know, spent time on the A train going up to the Studio Museum in Harlem after school to meet her um, some days and got to experience all of the art there and we would sneak into music festivals because we didn't have a lot of money and um, experience. So your mom was an, art, was an actress and is an actress. She still is an actress. But yes. she also ex she also shared with you arts, yes. the arts very early on. So that's part of your formative years. Yes. And so I remember, you know, uh, James Vanderzee and, you know, Houston Conwell and David Hammonds, all of these artists. And as a little person, you're like, this stuff is crazy. I mean, Cindy Sherman is bizarre. Yeah. And but she kept taking me, mm -hmm. taking me to museums and festivals and art exhibits and installations and to people's homes. I remember, you know, going to visit um, Carmen de Lavalot and Jeffrey Holder. And I remember seeing him in Annie, you know, and then I was at his home and she'd given me some skirts that she could no longer wear. And my mother was I remember her saying this is such a ma an amazing moment. You won't even understand this for years. Yeah. But how important this woman is to dance and gifting you. And so those were a lot of my experiences growing up. Amazing, amazing. And then if you switch to school, uh, in high school, what was a, do you have a crazy memory of something that was phenomenal or something that was challenging or a special teacher that really believed in you? So I ended up going back to Chicago, and I went to St. Ignatius um, Prep, so a Jesuit school. And I, I remember being invited as a sophomore, which was very rare, um, to participate in a Kairos retreat. And so they they were mostly for juniors. Right. And you go, and it's a transformative weekend where you kind of are broken down and built up, but it's really about service and your relationship to God. Uh, and your relationship to others, mm -hmm. to humanity. And I was invited sophomore year. I think one of my teachers had suggested that I would be good. And it was an amazing experience. You're crying and you're thinking about who you are as a person and who you want to grow. And you're 15 years And you're old. 15. And what your role is mm -hmm. on this earth. Um, and yes, and the relationship you want to have with the universe, with your God, with your family. It's beautiful. Yes, and I, I will never forget that. So fast forward, my stepson was considering going to school and he, I told him about my experiences and he ended up going to the sister school or the brother school of St. Ignatius. And I hope he will have the same kinds of experiences, but he was, and he continues to say, it's about being service. It's service to others, service, service to, to others. others.
Yeah, it's it's actually, look, I think young people love those opportunities. Yeah. But then they have to find the place that gives them the framework yes. to do that. Yes. So that was, I will never forget that experience. And then we ended up going to um, do uh, humanitarian work in uh, the Appalachian Mountains in West Virginia. Interesting. And I remember going and seeing poverty like I've never seen before here in the United States and helping a family clean their home. We threw out beds that were soaked in urine and feces. And this family with five kids, three of whom were born um, from an incestuous relationship with an uncle. Here, right here in our country. And I remember the pastor saying to me, well, don't worry if someone calls you the N-word because they've never seen black people. Mm. And I remember thinking that is such a lot of pressure to put on a 15-year-old to like figure out how to navigate that if that happens. So mm-hmm. let's hope it doesn't. But I guess, okay, I'm on my own. And it never happened. Yeah. In fact, the little people who saw me were, I guess, so enchanted that they just wanted to hang out with me instead of having me clean the house. Um, but that was also a really pure example of like what love and human connection can look and feel like when it's not interrupted by adult you know paranoia or rhetoric and so when it's authentic yes yes and so I spent a week there doing all kinds of humanitarian activities like that and it was um, incredibly powerful it's powerful to hear the story uh, quite a few years later Yeah. yeah Um, so then you carried on through in your, in different careers, in different jobs before you entered politics. And again, art was always, and young people has always, have always come together for you. Yes. And is that, do you believe from your education, from these opportunities and the combination of your mom? Absolutely. So my mom ended up getting married again uh, to an artist. And so uh, they're still happily married. That's nice. But um, yes, it was a combination of in the house. That was what we talked about. You know, when we would do family outings, they were to museums or events. And so I learned how to respect the arts and artists and to also see them as storytellers helping us navigate a very complicated world and inserting beauty or love, complication, all of that. Um, And so I've never done anything without incorporating the arts into the work. So fast forward, I go to graduate school and I I, I, um, get my degree in arts management. I go to work at a nonprofit arts organization here doing murals. I then go to another nonprofit that works on political graphics. I then go into the movie industry, but that was short-lived because you never have any time to do anything else. And then I ended up turning into pure advocacy, but always finding ways to incorporate arts into it. Yeah, I think it's 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 just who you are. It is who I am. Yeah, yeah. And and just to switch a little bit, because I, I, I really want to keep this about you, but you are married and you have a husband that supports what I would su- assume is a busy life and that you're traveling a lot <laughs> and and how is that like how do you balance the the work and the and the husband and the family good lord i try to <laughs> um check out as many books as possible on what a superwoman looks like yes um but i never am able to finish those books so i it's I, a work in progress it is a work in progress <laughs> i fail all the time I am so grateful to be married to someone who supports my career choices yeah. um, and understands that I have a gift and he does want to support the gift. That's beautiful. We also, you know, are challenged because he likes home cooked meals, as do the kids. Um, and I like to cook and I like to keep a clean house and I have pets, which I love and I miss when I'm not home. And so... Um, There are pings of guilt, you know, that I feel a lot. Yeah. Um, But I could not do this without a village of support. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, pets, just tell us who they are. (laughs) I mean, people care more, I think, about our pets than our kids. Like, that's kind of a funny thing (laughs) that I'm like. It's So we had, I started off with uh, two dogs, and they both passed away. So I think we're still grieving, and now we have two cats. Okay. So we have... um, 
Sister Casey, who's the oldest, and then baby Sable, who we just got. And Sable is, I think, 11 months, and Casey is uh, about four years old. They're rescue pets, um, and they are divas in their own right, and I just love them. So you have two kids, two divas, and a husband, and you're traveling a yeah. lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But I think even though you're trying to achieve being superwoman, you're in the you're in the balance there. You're doing pretty darn good. I think so. No one's left yet. Yeah. The cats yeah. have not packed a little bag. I got you. They're got not you. going down the street. Good. Good. <laughs> um, but cats can be divas. Like, that's just kind of their nature. Oh, I, my I, I mean, I'm not trying to be anti-cat. No. It's actually pro-cat. It's just acknowledging. So my husband was grieving that we got the cat to help with the dog because the dog was getting old, you know. And then he's like, oh, I love the cat. And then I, the, the cat started to love me. So then he's like, I don't like this cat. The cat has to go. Then I got another <laughs> cat to keep her company. And then she started sleeping with my husband. And my husband's like, I love this cat. That's great. And then, of course, the cat came back to me because I am the cat whisperer so now he is he has contentious relationships with all the animals with both cats yes. yeah yeah everyone's jealous of everyone that's, that's really good. the truth keeps the keeps it interesting it does keep it interesting yeah. <laughs> okay so I'm going to switch a little bit and ask okay. just some quicker questions okay. which are best advice you've ever received and maybe the worst advice you've ever received Best advice I ever received which I didn't take was uh, join a, a sports team when you're in school yeah yeah. 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 You missed that opportunity. I missed that opportunity. And it is, I think anyone who's been part of a team just is better at doing team activities. Right. And team activities are called living nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The worst advice I ever received was, um, well, someone told me not to use, they said, why are you running for office? And he said, well, don't ever say that again. I was like, okay, well, that was like four elections and, you know, four campaigns later, and I seemed to be successful. So, so the worst was advice bad. wasn't good advice. Correct. Okay. Um, Who is your biggest cheerleader? My mother. Yeah. My mother, she sends me texts every day. She's so excited. She tells everyone. I'm literally, we were someplace, and she was talking to the janitor, and she's like, oh, my daughter, she's in Congress. Oh. And I was like, lady, this man does not care about this. But she is my biggest oh. fan. And she's watched you because you were in California Assembly, yes. California Senate. Like, you've really gone up, and you've moved along. And uh, listen, I think she should be very She proud. should. So funny story, when I first got elected to be on the community college board, I said, hey, will you come out for the election day party? And she's like, no, I'm busy. I was like, okay, well, this is a serious <laughs> thing. She's like, I'm sorry. Then we have the swearing in. I said, well, you come to this. And she said, uh, maybe, I don't know. She said, is this even for real? What is this? Wow. And I said, yes, the mayor is coming. It's for real. So she comes out and we have a big thing. The mayor is there. I say my stuff, I, my spiel, and I say, my mother's here, and please introduce yourself to her. And then at the end, she says, oh, I didn't even have time to talk to the mayor. All these people came up to talk <laughs> to me. Why did they do that? I said, mother, because I sit in the microphone to introduce yourself to my mother. So she's, uh, so she's like, okay, well, maybe when you run for the assembly. Well, maybe when you run for this thing. So now she seems to be quite okay now that I'm in Congress. I love it. I love it. She's a character. <laughs> She's a diva, too. Yeah. Um, favorite meal? And you could pick more than one if oh, you don't wow. have one. But a, a meal or meals that you love to eat? I could go every day eating a salad and a slice of pizza. It's a good balance. Yeah. So I grew up as a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for 26 years. And so vegetables, I think, are just part of who I am. My husband's like, a salad? If that was your last meal, it would be a salad? And I'm like, yes. Listen, it's, you know. And what kind of pizza would you have? I, I'm a very basic girl. I could do deep dish because I'm from Chicago, or I could do a thin slice of cheese. Because but just of, a good, a good yeah. with tomato sauce and good cheese. Correct. Yeah. No I'm frills. on that one. No frills. Yeah. No frills. Yeah. Are you still a vegetarian? No. I... um I guess on my, I guess as people can understand, for a while I was trying to get pregnant, and so my doctor said, real iron, real iron, and so that didn't come to pass, but um, you can't go back, so now I just kind of, slowly I don't eat, a, I don't eat a lot of red meat, though. I think I still do more fish yeah. and vegetables. You eat healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, in California. 
So you go to D.C., they have no good food in D.C. They have no good oh, produce. People in D.C., I'm really sorry she just said that. <laughs> but but yeah, we do happen to have very good produce, produce here. So when you yes, do go back it's, east, it's not the same because they have different climate correct, and it's harder correct. to get it there. Correct. It's not a bad thing about the people there. No. Yeah, yeah, I just want to go on record. No, no, I love true. the people. I love the I have people, people that will come. Like when my daughter went to college, I would send her avocados, and she would think that I was and, – and she was in Boston area, and she thought like it was – that was the best gift. That was her birthday gift. Right. A dozen avocados. So, like, I get it. Yeah. It's a climate yeah. region where yeah. they're getting their produce from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, next one, favorite music. Ooh. Jazz. Yeah. I grew up on jazz. Yeah. I mean, I like hip-hop and everything else, but, yeah, there's something about, like, Dizzy Gillespie or Ella Fitzgerald or... I'm with you. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, if you have time, do you have a hobby, something that you enjoy doing that is not work or family related? I love working in the garden. Mm-hmm. I have a, I grow vegetables and, and, you know, basil and tomatoes. So I, I do love that. Um, I love traveling, you know, recreationally. Um, where I'm, would you, where would you go if you could go uh, one place you haven't been to? I would love to go. I would love to go to Morocco mm. and I would really love to go to Greece. Okay. So then you'll you'll get there. I will get, there. get there. I yeah. will get there. They're both beautiful places. Um, okay, this is gonna look funny. If you had to do a chore in the house other than gardening, because it's not really a chore in the same way, what's your favorite chore? I love doing laundry. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> it's my favorite chore. Yes, it's very therapeutic. Right. Right. You, completion. Warm. You right. and you have warm things warm and you things. push out the wrinkles. Exactly. <laughs> so and we actually have a clothesline. So I hang them out, and I feel like I'm living on a farm someplace. I love yes, it. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm glad we could bond on that one. Me too. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite quote or mantra that you go by? Um, so, you know, uh, Mr. Rogers said this, and I love it. He said, um, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. Mm, I like that. And so there's so many things we don't want to talk about cancer or death or you know depression and if you if you can say it then you can kind of talk your way through it and I do believe that yeah it's manageable mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's easy but it's no. it's also just sometimes it, and I think Mr. Rogers probably was a good person to say you got to face things yes you know you got to move forward but yes yeah and I would assume in what you do is a lot of that which is dealing with difficult things but making sure that they are manageable yes but sometimes it's like even in your own house when we tiptoe around so many things. And I mean, you don't you don't want to say something to hurt someone's feelings, really. But if you don't talk about stuff, if you if you don't own your feelings, your fear, your sadness or um, just the unknown, then that becomes so much more powerful, even more powerful than you. So, yeah. I've really subscribed to that. I think it's it's good. And, you know, I, I subscribe to um, what made me think of this, Brene Brown, and she said, and I've used this for years, yeah. choose discomfort over resentment. Mm. Because discomfort is something that we all have to mm-hmm. deal with. And, and the moments you do it, it's a tough one because you have to, like you said, unco- uncomfortable questions or uncomfortable conversations. But if not, that resentment actually can make you ill. Yes. It can really yes. lay within you. So even my kids, like I always say to them, and they're like, it's a reminder. Just mm-hmm. like yours, it's manageable, mm-hmm. reminding ourselves. Mm-hmm. So, okay, we're going to skip now. Okay. Not as meaningful, but fun. Okay. So there's a game called Kiss, Mary Kill. Okay. And it's we use we play the game Kiss, Mary Trash because I don't kill. Okay. And the game is, I'm going to give you three things. Uh-huh. It's really fun. Okay. And you have to pick one that you would kiss, one that you would marry, and one you would trash. So based on that, the kiss would be you like it. Mary, love it. Love it. Trash, not so great. Okay. Okay. And there's only a few, and they're real softballs, so I think you're going to be really okay. good at this. Okay. The first one is seasons. Summer, spring, winter. Mm. Summer, spring, winter. Kiss, winter. Ooh, okay, good. Mary, a spring. Spring. Trash, summer. Yeah. It's getting a little too hot. Too hot and yeah. humid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, if you're going to relax, which I hope you have time for, the three are Netflix, reading, meditating. Ooh, okay. Trash, meditating. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Not um, good, but okay. Yeah. Uh, Netflix, kiss, marry, reading. Reading. Okay, cool. Um, meals, 
breakfast, lunch, dinner. Oh, dear. Mm. No trash on that one. But I guess I will say trash for breakfast, lunch is Mary, kiss is dinner. Okay. Yeah, I like lunches, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, movies, comedy, romantic, thriller. Mm. Ooh, okay. Thriller, kiss. Comedy, trash, romantic, Mary. Nice. Yeah. Um, food, Mexican, Japanese, Italian. Oh, oh, okay. Trash, Italian, carbs, sorry. Mary, Japanese, ooh, fish. And then kiss was the last one. Mexican. Mexican. You like Mexican. I do like Mexican. I do too. Okay, this is a good one because okay. this you don't you just trashed the Italian, but I know you eat pasta. So this is a three. <laughs> Fusilli penne spaghetti. Ooh, okay. People have very strong feelings about their pasta. That's, that's true. why I bring yeah. this up. So Fusilli Mary. Okay. Okay. Spaghetti kiss penne trash. Wow. Okay. There's, I'm sure like a psychologist could come to these and yeah. say, why is she saying these? No, no. Um, and yet I was very deliberate because I'm like, I do know. Oh, yeah. No, people I do, do know them. their pasta. Yeah. It's a real clear. Yeah. Um, sports, basketball, football, baseball. Baseball, Mary. Football, trash. No, basketball, trash. Football, kiss. Okay. It's a nice balance. Yeah. Yeah. I like baseball a lot. It's very therapeutic. Do you play? watch a certain team well i'm a fan of the white Sox and the cubs because i'm from chicago yeah. i do root for the dodgers because i'm married to someone from la yeah see sometimes if they played each other you'd be we really, have discussions have to, yeah i sign waivers <laughs> okay good good um so we're kind of at the end but okay. i ask this final question which i is really important to me because this is about us coming together this mm -hmm. is about us being able to share our stories so other people who will be listening will be able to relate or even just understand. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have to relate. You just have to understand or sometimes to be excited by something or feel like, wow, that person's real. Mm. So my last question is about joy. Mm. I would love for you to talk about what is joyful to you or what joy means to you or what brings you joy. And then talk about joy as like if you feel joy, how that spreads to others. Because if somebody has joy, I do believe that it can actually be positively emanate and help others yeah. or spread joy. Well, I find the most joy when I am connecting to people and places. And so um, nature, animals, in the wilderness, yeah. new spaces, because it's when all the synapses are going off and you're present, you're incredibly present. Um, and that makes me happy, you know, most happy probably, you know, grass or mountains or trails because I just feel closer to the universe. Yeah. Um, and how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to love, you know, Mother Earth. Um, and mm -hmm. it brings me peace. And I think I share my joy. I'm actually a very happy person. I have a lot of stress, but I'm incredibly happy. And when I'm happy, I do see how it impacts everyone else. Exactly. And when I'm sad, I, I, and, it's, and I tell my husband all the time, there's so much weight that I always have to be happy. Um, but I do see the power. And so I, I try to live every day being really present and connected yeah. to everyone else because yeah. I, I want us all to live in joy. I want us all to live in joy. I will end there because that hallelujah and thank you. I agree. <laughs> thank you so Yay. much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And continue to be doing what you do and spread joy. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.